What's up? This is Patrick. Welcome to episode 47 of the Double ETF podcast. Everything except the football. I hope you guys are doing great. Today, it is an Oscars preview. We have Woody Meacham. We have John Motford. We have Nick Manback. And we have a ton of laughs for you. Predictions for every major category. Let's say we don't exactly take ourselves seriously. <laughs> But uh, hopefully you will enjoy this. So if you want to drop us a line, you can do so at EETF pod on Twitter or EETF podcast at gmail.com. Drop us a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcasts. It is very much appreciated. And as always, thank you to the members of the awesome club. You know who you are. You can go to paypal.me slash EETF pod. Thanks and have a good one. All right, welcome to episode 47, the Oscars preview. With me tonight, I have, back from the dead, John Watford. How are you, sir? Brains. <laughs> I'm great. How are you, Patrick? Thanks for having me back. Good, thanks. Oh, always a pleasure, of course. We have, back on the show, Woody Meacham. How are you, sir? Good, Patrick. Thanks again. Now that uh, Mudford's here, I feel a lot better. <laughs> it wasn't personal, Woody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we won't have any anyone's death on our conscience anymore. <laughs> and also with us tonight, Nick Bamback. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. I helped bring John Mudford back to life, so... He's on the show again. Weekend at Mudford. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's your good deed done for this year, I guess. <laughs> okay, Oscars preview. Tonight is March the 2nd. Unfortunately, we have to record a little bit in advance because of, you know, work crap, as <laughs> all of us are too familiar with. Okay, so let's jump right into it. Or do you guys have any uh, general feelings about this year's Oscars nominees? Do you think it's a good year or a really shit year? Or do you expect uh, one specific movie to sweep? Or Nick, what do you think? I think this has been one of the strongest years in recent memory, quite honestly. I think that 2019 was a really strong year. The year of Parasite, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, uh, 1917, quite a few movies. But I feel like this is one year that I really like in particular because you really, there's no front runners in any of these categories. It's almost like rolling the dice, so to speak. And I find that really exciting because I don't know about anyone else in this room, but I really hate when the Oscars are so predictable. Like, you know, who's going to win and it makes it kind of boring to me at least, but I feel like in almost the majority of these categories, I really don't know who's going to win. Yeah, true. Uh, Woody, what do you think? I'm going to go the opposite of that and think this is a year of redemption for a lot of people. And so for me, just if you look at all of the other award shows that have gone around, it has been almost the same group of people winning. And I have a feeling that trend is going to continue. I haven't looked at the uh, like the BAFTAs or, or the Golden Globes or anything. I I have no idea who did well on any of those. So whatever happens will be a surprise to me. <laughs> John, what do you think? I think most of the categories are pretty strong, and I'm sort of weighing them with Nick that I think um, sort of unpredictable. I think the weakest category is actually Best Picture, which is the one everyone's excited about. I think there are two in there that were thrown in because they're blockbuster movies, and the rest are typical Oscar bait movies. So um, except for that category, I think it's strong. I think we could have, this year, we could have gone back to five nominees. Yes, easily. Agreed. Because there's some in there that don't have a chance in hell in the best picture category. They're just thrown in, right? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So we can start with the uh, quote-unquote minor categories. I have a list in front of me. So we can start with writing original screenplay. We have The Benches of Inisherin, Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Fablemans, Tar, and Triangle of Sadness. Woody, what's your impression? Everything, everywhere, all at once. It was so unique. I went into it having no clue what I was going to watch. And even though it was a bit of, I've heard some people say it's kind of a Marvel ripoff and that it's playing in multiple universes and things like that. 
the way that that story was structured because it was so complex i was just fascinated by it the rest of them i don't know if, if you want us to bash the other ones on why they're not going to win but <laughs> fire away but <laughs> banshees of Irish and Sheeran was boring as hell <laughs> uh the Fablemans was uh, uh, Spielberg just telling his own story. Tar was cool. If anything, I think I would prefer that one to be the number two. And I told y'all I'm not watching Triangle of Sadness. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, John, what do you think? Um, I'm going to go with Woody on one of his opinions, but <laughs> uh, I'll go with him on the everything everywhere all at once. I think that was the most unique and, and especially in this category, the writing original screenplay. And you all know I'm a big Marvel fan, but I think they do better than Marvel. Uh, Marvel focuses too much on the science and the playing around with, um, I don't know, like playing, um, playing for nerds sort of thing where it's like bring back the old, um, old actors of certain actors and stuff like that. But I think the real heart of why multiverse concepts are intriguing is because it gives you a chance to look at what would happen if you had made different decisions in your life. Mm -hmm. And now you get to see it in real time sort of thing. So, and I think that's where everything everywhere all at once really touched upon heartstrings beyond the science fiction and the science of it. So I think that, uh, is the strongest, and I think it will win that category. My second would be Triangle of Sadness, so I don't know what your hang-up is there, Woody, but uh, <laughs> it's really good. Terror, I enjoyed. Um, Banshees of Venice here, and I actually find super funny. I, um, I can see why somebody would find it boring, but uh, I found it super dark and funny. Fablemans, I couldn't stand. I thought it was uh, not only boring, the characters were so exaggerated and poorly acted. I hated Fableman. It's not my least favorite in the best picture category, but I'm skipping ahead there. Um, um, but yeah, I would go with everything everywhere all at once. Okay. Nick, what about you? Uh, so this is tricky because we still don't know when we're recording this episode uh, where the writers guild of America who, who's winning, because like someone said, those, uh, Directors Guild, Actors Guild, Writers Guild. Usually those are same people voted in the Oscars a lot of times. Okay. So those are good uh, precursors. Honestly, I could see Banshees of Ish in the Sheer and Win in only because the Oscars as of late have kind of leaned towards dark comedy, like Jojo Rabbit won a few years ago. Um, okay. And Martin McDonough is, I think, one of the best director writers today. And this is one of his most uh, lauded films and i feel like it's a category where i think you could see someone win in this award but not necessarily win in best picture or director or one of those two awards so i feel like if i had to pick one that i think it's that although i will say everything everywhere all at once could win i don't know i can't see it winning it but like i feel like it has it's a strong contender also tar has gotten a lot of mm. praise as of late for the screenplay. To be quite honest, I didn't see Triangle of Sadness yet. It's going to be on Hulu tomorrow, so I'm so watching it. And I'm going to let Munford know exactly my thoughts on it because I'm so excited. <laughs> All right, I'll this watch it then too, just because it's free. We'll, we'll watch it like it's like a watch. We'll do it like a watch party, so to speak, Woody. Yeah, I'll be looking at my watch the entire time. <laughs> um, Fablemans, I don't think is going to win for screenplay, even though it's Tony Kushner, who's a Pulitzer Prize winner, and he's worked with Spielberg a lot. So I feel like it's a toss up, but I will say um, if I had to pick one, it's probably Banshees or Everything Ever Wall at once. Okay. All right. Uh, personally, I wasn't crazy about everything everywhere all at once, but I can see its merit for that category for sure. I would go either Tar or Banshees, personally. All right. Uh, okay. So next category, writing. Oh, well, adapt on. Sorry. Yep. Yeah, just going back one second to sure. uh, Triangle of Sadness. Woody, did you watch White Lotus and did you like it? If you did. No. And well, I watched the first episode of the first season didn't like it because it was about miserable people. So no. Okay. So maybe you won't like Triangle of Sadness because to me, it's like an extended White Lotus episode. I didn't like it either. Okay. Okay. I just don't like it because Woody Harrelson's in it. 
<laughs> they cannot <laughs> exist in the same universe. So. <laughs> okay. And he is extremely entertaining in that movie, Woody Harrelson, okay, for well, sure. Okay, well, so am I, so maybe I'll give it a shot. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I talked about it a little bit on last episode. I really didn't like uh, Triangle of Sadness, and I expected to love it because his first movie, Force Majeure, is awesome. So have to see that. Oh, uh, yeah, you should. You should. Uh, okay, so... Let's move on to writing adapted screenplay. We have All Quiet on the Western Front, Glass Onion, Living, Top Gun Maverick, adapted from the 1986 movie, I guess, <laughs> and Women Talking. Okay, so Nick, what about you? Well, I was going to say, anytime it's a sequel or that it's like, like a continuation like from an existing medium, that's why it's nominated for adapted screenplay. So like the Borat movies, both the Borat movies are a good example because those were nominated in adapted screenplay because Borat came from the existing show, the OG okay. show. So that's why. Thank you for explaining that. That's been bugging me this entire time. So Me too. Yeah, yeah I, I had no idea. Glass Onion's the same exact thing because it's a sequel to Knives Out. So that's why, and I'll just start the conversation, I guess, because that'd be the sure, time. Sure. <laughs> but for me, this is weird because the original screenplay is so competitive. Like, there's like at least three or four that could easily win. This one, I don't think the competition is nearly as fierce as as this um, previous category. If I had to pick one that I think will win, it's probably going to be Women Talking. Okay. Or um, All Quiet, but I would lean towards Women Talking being the winner because. It seems like a play. I haven't seen it yet. So, but it just seems like the type of like dialogue driven movie that would attract a screenplay Oscar. And like, uh, okay, so this is stupid me chiming in. Is it adapted from a book? Or? It is by Miriam, okay. Miriam Taze, Canadian author. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. But it's also directed by a Canadian, right? Sarah yes, Pauly. Uh, Sarah Pauly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. So, women talking. All right. John, what do you think? Um, I don't really know. I mean, I haven't seen Living. I'll start with that. So the other ones, personally, I would pick Glass Onion. I don't think it really has a shot. I don't think Top Gun has a shot. All Quiet on the Western Front was a good looking movie, but it's another war movie. It's the same movie you've seen a million times. Women Talking was just the most heavy handed piece of shit I've ever seen. It was... <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Um, by piping hot take <laughs> right so i'm by process of elimination the one that i haven't seen living is the one that i would say is, <laughs> okay that's the one that i did see i mean i've seen most of these but i would choose personally living because that's based on Iker kurosaro's uh, ikaru which is a really great early 50s movie and who writes the screenplay is a very famous um Japanese writer, but it's really good. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, but that would be the one that I would pick. Yeah, Ishiguro is the writer. Oh, okay. Woody, what do you think for this one? Well, just to be a contrarian, I'm going to go All Quiet on the Western Front because it won the BAFTA, but then again, it won almost everything at the BAFTA, it felt like. Right. Uh, although our friend Hector complained at me because it doesn't follow the book at all. It like leaves a bunch of stuff out. Confirmed. Right. Uh, even though I'm talking to two librarians, I don't read. I like <laughs> to read. My wife is a librarian, and she hates that I don't read. She really liked women talking. But just to be a contrarian, I'm going to go all quiet on the Western Front. I actually just watched that last night, and it was really good. But yeah, it doesn't follow the the book, really. Well, that's because they adapted it from the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I uh, personally, I I have no opinion for this one. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there you go. So let's move on for the next one. Visual effects. Uh, we have All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar, The Way of Water, The Batman, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, and Top Gun Maverick. Uh, Woody, what do you think? I'm giving this one to Top Gun Maverick. So this is the one I think they win because... The camera system they came up to film the in-plane motion was fantastic. And the fact that Tom Cruise got in there, this is the one they give to him. Yeah, I can see that happening. John, what do you think? I didn't know that about the camera thing. So my first reaction was to go to Avatar. I think that's going to be their one win. As um, But 
yeah, maybe Woody has a good point with Top Gun Maverick. That'll be my number two pick, but I still think it's going to be Avatar. I think the actors had to direct themselves pretty much once they were in the plane, right? Correct. Yeah. Mm. So that's... Uh, yeah, you might be right. And of course, you know, it was all them for real. Uh, visual effects, so that does that include special effects in general? I believe so. <laughs> Hey, everybody, we're experts here. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I, don't see, I don't see that category, so maybe well, it does. Yeah, there's no other categories that would encapsulate that. So Okay. Huh. Well, those are on the technical awards, which are on the other night, hosted by the other person. <laughs> well, yeah, to be could quite be. honest, like, there was at one point that was called special effects. Yes. Like, at some point in, in, in its history. Oh, true. So I guess it encapsulates it. But I guess it's like a catch-all. What would you think, Nick, for this one? I'm usually really bad at predicting these categories, so it's like a shot in the dark. I'm going to say it's either Avatar or Top Gun, personally. Yeah, it I has agree. to be, I mean, if I had to pick one, I think Top Gun. It has the best narrative going into this Oscars because... You know, with the pandemic, people didn't want to go to the movies, really. And this was, like, the first really, really, really big movie to come out. And, like, the post-pandemic. So I feel like it's going to sweep a lot of these technical awards or be strong contenders. And personally, I mean, it's only me, but any day of the week, I would give the edge to actual practical effects rather than CGI crap. Agreed. I don't care how nice Avatar looks. I would give the edge to Top Gun just out of principle, you know? And, and does James Cameron's movies need more Oscars? I mean, come on. <laughs> well, I mean... He's got if, all the money. If that's your criteria, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta say, though, the Batman had a few really cool shots. Agreed. Like, uh, for example, during the highway chase, when the uh, fuel uh, truck, you know, blows up, and a big ball of flames and the Batmobile jumps out of it. That was like, I, anyway. Agreed. I'm going to cut out this part. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, every time one of my tangents goes nowhere, out it goes. <laughs> okay. Uh, next category, we have sound. We have All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar, The Batman, Elvis, and Top Gun. Nick, what do you think? I don't know. I feel like All Quiet on the Western Front is the one that stands out to me because it's a war movie. And I feel like war movies tend to do well with sound categories. But I don't know. My gut is also saying Top Gun Maverick. So I feel like it's one of those two. I was going to say that. Like in the theater, that must have been pretty awesome. It was. Yeah. I, I, I really wish that All Quiet wasn't on Netflix because that seems like an incredible movie experience to see like in an actual theater and i know like one of my friends saw it at his local cinema recently all quiet on the western front and he said it was incredible so i feel like you're losing something to watching it on your tv where was it uh, played uh in sioux falls south dakota like there's huh. there's just like different cities that like hosted like i know it's playing in new york and la for example okay i didn't know that okay yeah they don't allow netflix in south dakota <laughs> it, it has to be in a theater in order to be um yeah that's true nominated right? yes that's yeah. but true. there's some chains like amc there was a huge thing about roma remember when they, they wouldn't show that because it's a yeah. netflix movie so it's just certain chains are you know dumb <laughs> and all they need to do really is show it for like a night right all right. Uh, Woody, what do you think for sound? I'm going to go Elvis on this one hmm. uh, because just the way that they did the music and the just I'll give the credit to the trippiness of that movie that I think it might pick up a technical award for sound because it's the only real musical finger quote that of the year. And so that's where I'm going to land. Although All Quiet would be my number two. You know what they would say in their acceptance speech? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I deserved it. <laughs> That's okay. All right, John, what do you think? I think this is the one that Top Gun gets, uh, but my choice would be All Quiet on the Western Front. I'm with Nick that I think it's between those two. The music argument is compelling, though, Woody. I get that. See, this is why me and Buffer are friends. We agree on the best sound. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. So the next one will probably be a very short conversation. <laughs> short film, live action. I haven't seen any of those. Me either. I haven't either. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I saw one today. <laughs> okay. I, go ahead. I saw. I, Lu- wait, 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 wait. I'll name them first. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Go uh, ahead. Okay. So we have An Irish Goodbye, uh, yeah. Eva Lou, uh, Les Poupilles, Night Ride, and The Red Suitcase. Okay. John, go ahead. Uh, the only one I saw was Le Poupier, um, mm-hmm. and I would say I would vote for any of the other four. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I thought you said, like, poop. I thought uh, Poupé, and yeah, I was like, wait, what? Fitting, <laughs> fitting. It was, it's this movie that really, really, really tries too hard to pull at your heartstrings, and it's not and You have no heart. Which is- and I have no heart. It's the black and heart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't even I, know what's the front runner in this category to be quite honest yeah I, I know nothing about any of those yeah. and uh, we can say the same thing about the next category short film animated okay we have the boy the mole the fox and the horse uh, the flying sailor ice merchants uh, my year of dicks uh, an ostrich told me the world is fake and I dot 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 I think I believe it and I think I believe it is the full Oh, okay. Yeah. Thanks. I had no idea. So uh, whoever wants to say anything about those? I'll lead this one because I saw four of them. Wow. Oh, shit. Wow. Okay. It was nice. Yeah, most of them are online. So okay. the the boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse was wonderful. It was one of the sweetest things I've ever seen. It's adapted from a children's book. The animation style was so trippy. It was just really hmm. elegant lines. And it was like, it was all takes place in the snow. And it's just about acceptance. The, the storyline behind it was just tugged. Our friend, Mike Drew, I sent it to him because I'm like, have your kids watch this. This is so sweet. Um, the Flying Sailor was like an acid trip. It was a mishmash of different animation styles. Um, and if you want to see an, a big, fat, animated male penis, uh, that's the one for you. You want to um, check that off your bucket right, list? Right, check that off your you box <laughs> if you need that. Um, <laughs> the Ice Merchants was trippy as well. Uh, it was one of those no sound. It felt very foreign, like a e- European feel to it. Uh, and was just weird. And my year of dicks and the ostrich where I just saw the beginnings of those and I just couldn't, couldn't get behind it. Um, and yes, actually, Nick, you are correct. Sorry. Nobody can read that. So it doesn't make any sense, but so <laughs> right after that, the boy, the mole, uh, the fox and the horse. Uh, okay. But actually what do you, you mentioned the uh, ice merchants felt foreign. I don't know where any of those were made. Do you know if they are like American made or, um, I'm putting you on the spot here. I'm sorry. But it felt it felt French to me. So let me. Do, I'm gonna just double check. Okay. Oh, by the way, the New Yorker is what uh, the New Yorker's website is where most of these are available in the states, at least. That's okay. true. They do have that sometimes with like these categories that they'll have them on. So, by the way, it was the Ice Merchants was made in Portugal and France. Okay. So in UK, it looks like a little bit as well. All right. I, I think I want my ear dicks to win just to hear them say, and the Oscar goes too. <laughs> my, yeah, yeah, they're going to bleep it out. Uh, John, do you have you seen any of those? I've seen zero of those. Yeah. yeah same. The local theater here is playing all the animated and live action short films on the Sunday following the Oscars. I wish it was before I'd go to see it. But. All right. Okay, so we're going to breeze through. Production design, All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar, Babylon, Elvis, The Fablemans. John, what do you think? I'm not sure what the category is really looking at for production design. So, I mean, I don't feel too confident to pick from those. But are we talking about like set design sort of thing or what is that? That's the impression that I have, but I might be wrong. Right. Then maybe I'll quiet on the Western Front there and not having seen Babylon. So, okay. I don't know. So that's art direction, John. Oh, then maybe Elvis has a shot there then. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. It's a good question. I don't have a strong opinion here. Uh, Woody, what do you think? Yeah, so sorry, I was just looking up. Uh, it does have to go recognize the achievement in art direction mm. for production design. I'm going Elvis on this one again, just for the trippy feel that they were able to weave throughout the entire thing that it was. 
almost the entire thing was a dream Mm -hmm. was and just the way they evolved going from when he was a little kid all the way up till uh he passes i thought was just fantastic um okay sounds good so next one music original done yes skip nick Oh, sorry. Uh, I feel like I feel like what's really weird about this category is that it sometimes favors action movies and it also favors like period movies. Mm-hmm. So if that's the case, then Babylon, Elvis, Fablemans, and really all quiet, they all are period pieces. So I feel like it's kind of a toss up. But for me, if I had to pick one, I don't know. I feel like maybe Babylon or the Fablemans but I have no strong opinion in that category. I think maybe it's going to be like, uh, you know, Hollywood, uh, you know, the Hollywood circle jerk, but I would <laughs> see Babylon winning this one. I could see it too. Me too. Because it's it's kind of a look behind the curtain, if you like. So I don't know, maybe they, I could see them or or Elvis, I could, I could see that one winning as well. So uh, next one, music, original song, applause, tell it like a woman, hold my hand from Top Gun Maverick, lift me up from Black Panther, Natu Natu from RRR, and this is a life from everything, everywhere, all at once. Uh, Nick, what do you think? Okay, so before we get started, I didn't realize David Byrne did the soundtrack on everything, everywhere, all at once. So, like, I but I saw either. that, and no one's talked about it really, and I think that he's such a huge name um okay diane warren okay so before we get started though my podcast is going to do an episode on just the song and score categories um diane warren she's going to honor an oscar she's not going to win she never wins uh terrible schlocky music for the most part um i mean <laughs> piping I hot take Be- <laughs> wait what piping hot take <laughs> oh no I, I think it's like facts like uh okay. <laughs> i mean like her movies like like you know the whole story behind day of Warden, right like how she gets nominations constantly she sends like sheet music and she sends gifts and like all, like it's crazy but like she plays the game that's why she's always on and her movies like christian movies and crappy melodramatic movies okay get i i didn't oscar know oscar nomination it's need, crazy yeah, interesting they need to do a documentary about her trying to win an oscar like an actual oscar not an honorary oscar um mm. but um anyway <laughs> i'm sorry um, maybe it was to shut her up like you know <laughs> let's give her a lifetime achievement so she can fuck off into the, the distance <laughs> now she doesn't have know? to write any music ever again <laughs> exactly <laughs> uh, uh, but for more of that listen to rock retrospect so this category i don't know i feel like rr has the momentum in the story and i think that's the one that's gonna win because i think that would be the first indian like song in indian to win in that category, if I'm not mistaken. Possible. I don't really have strong opinions. I mean, they could give it to Lady Gaga, another Oscar, and hell, give it to Rihanna, like an Oscar for Black Panther. So, I don't know. I'm going to go with the RRR. All right. Uh, Woody, what do you think? It will be not to, not to. And I was so shocked that RRR didn't get any other nominations other than this one, unless I'm totally wrong. Uh, international movie? No, it's not. No, this was the oh, only Oscar. You're right. Jesus. No, because they applied it for Best Picture, which means it couldn't be Best International. You have to choose. So Parasite, Parasite won both, though. Yeah, and and I think All Quiet on the Western Front's in both categories. Isn't and Try My Car just won yes. last year for International, and it was. Uh, I don't know. Picture. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, our, 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 our isn't even in the Best Picture list either. Right. I and I was so mad, and I wow. think you guys all know this. I've been complaining to you for months. <laughs> um, but I think once you guys just see the musical number, cause they're going to still perform all of these songs. I imagine, um, this thing is going to be wild. This, the crowd is going to get up and dance around. And if they don't, I'm going to watch something else, but this one I wins saw, hands down. I saw it last weekend. So it was good. I liked RR. It was crazy. I was all for it. All right. Uh, John, what do you think? Uh, yeah, just Based on hype, too, I would say not to, not to. Um, the only other one I think that is a bit of a contender there, maybe Lift Me Up. I think the song was a dud, personally, but people were happy to have Rih- Rih- Rihanna back and maybe some goodwill towards Chad Bosman. And it's, mm-hmm. But it was a sappy, disappointing song. Will it be as bad as the Super Bowl halftime show, though? <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Good question. Um, yeah, I, I think not to, not to. I think you're all right on that one. All right. 
Sounds good. And uh, sorry for the interruption, uh, John. That was uh, rude. Yeah, I, I'm going to leave now. Bye, everybody. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Au revoir, <Sorry>. Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> Au revoir. <laughs> All right. So next category, we have music still, but original score. We have All Quiet on the Western Front, Babylon, Banshees, Everything Everywhere, and The Fablemans. Uh, John, what do you think? I think it's going to be The Fablemans, just based on John Williams. Um, I don't think, like, looking back at these movies, I don't remember the, the scores, particularly in any of them. I don't think there's anything spectacular. Same. I didn't see Babylon. Um, but I think John Williams will get it again. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, Woody, what do you think? I'm going to go Babylon on this one. So again, it's just, uh, it was a time period piece. I thought that the stuff they were doing in the background from an audio perspective was fantastic. Nick, go ahead. So for me, I actually really liked Babylon. I think that should win. I'm not going to pick the film is just because it's Sean Williams. Like he has enough Oscars. Give someone else the freaking Oscar. I'm actually going to say, I think it's all quite in the Western front. I really enjoyed that soundtrack and I thought it was very unique what they did with it. So I think it's between that or Babylon, but I'll go with all quiet. Okay. So up next we have makeup and hairstyling. We have all quiet on the Western front, the Batman, Black Panther, Elvis, and the whale. Nick, what do you think? Oh, so for this category, I think it's going to go personally either Elvis or The Whale. Like, those are the two that I think, because I don't know if everyone's seen The Whale, but Brandon Frazier's uh, transformation to that character is, like, incredible, the makeup. But I think Elvis is the more visually striking, so I'll go with Elvis for this one. But I think The Whale is up there as a contender. All right. Uh, Woody? I, too, am going to go with Elvis just for Tom Hanks's extra chins. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, John, what do you think? I don't think Elvis because of the Tom Hanks one, because I, that, I feel that was mocked so much afterwards publicly that I think a lot of people think it was overdone. I think Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, is going to win that one. I believe they won for the first Black Panther movie in that. So, hmm. It, stylistically it's very similar because you like little wings on feet <laughs> <laughs> see last year though the eyes of tammy faye won and that was a biopic so i feel like i don't know like not that trends matter with the oscars but i feel like bombshell won and darkest hour and so i feel like the whale is the other one that i could see just because that transformation really stood out at least when i watched it have you guys seen that by the way the whale no nope it's really good. I mean, it's very much like a play, but I, I think I think it's really great. I don't really have an opinion for that one, but I've seen photos and the whale would, you know, I wouldn't be offended if it won. You know, it would be a good a good pick, I think. And I haven't seen Elvis, so I wouldn't, uh, I couldn't say. Uh, okay, so next we have international feature film. We have All Quiet on the Western Front, Argentina 1985, Close, EO, and The Quiet Girl. Uh, John, what do you think? Up front, I've only seen two of these, All Quiet on the Western Front and Argentina 1985. Uh, I think All Quiet on the Western Front has this one locked down, uh, just from the hype and stuff about it, With, like I say, without having seen three. Uh, Argentina 1985, if it did win, I wouldn't be disappointed. I quite enjoyed it. It's not a movie I would typically watch but uh, subject-wise, but it really hooked me in. Uh, and, you know, acting, directing, all that was really cool um but i don't i think all quiet is going to take it all right uh woody what do you think i agree all quiet just because they're not going to win best picture yeah and again similarly though it it swept most of the international awards i've seen mm -hmm. so that's a slam dunk for me okay uh nick what about you i've seen three of these i've seen all quiet argentina and i did see eo the other day because that's on the criterion channel that was really really good is it the old michael jackson captain eo <laughs> <laughs> the disney thing yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> i really enjoyed it i mean Ar argentina was was good it's a little over long but i mean i i thought it was overall a solid political uh courtroom movie and all quiet i just watched last night and that was really great. All Quiet's going to win just because it's up for Best Picture. And Drive My Car and Parasite were also Best Picture nominees. And 
they won this category. So I think that's the front runner um, for this category. Although it's weird, before the season started with the nominations with Argentina was actually the front runner in this category. Really? So it's okay. like really weird how the, the cards are stacked. And I wouldn't write off All Quiet on the Western Front for Best Picture. I think it could win because there could be splits in the votes because there's it's so competitive that, you know, we could see that happen. In, um, but it's, I think, definitely going to win international film. Usually I try to make an effort to watch all the international nominees, but this year was a, you know, abject failure. I've seen only All Quiet on the Western Front, and I saw parts of The Quiet Girl. That's actually really interesting, The Quiet Girls, on this, because it's an Irish movie, so it's in English. So I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's the first time it's an English-language movie in this reimagined category where they renamed it Foreign Language Movie to International. So I think, if I'm not wrong, I think it is the first one in English to be in this category. Okay. So... Go Ireland. <laughs> well, no, yeah, I, I think All Quiet will probably win this one. Okay, so next one we have film editing. Banshees, Elvis, Everything Everywhere, Tar, and Top Gun. Uh, John, what do you think? Everything, everywhere, all at once. There's so much um, going on in that movie that um, is spliced really well. Like, if you think of that scene where her face changes and all the different things and how quick that goes by and how it captures exactly what's going on in that movie. I think that one has this one locked down. I would agree. Yeah. What do you, what do you think? Can't believe it. I'm agreeing with John again, uh, but, it's, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my but, no, God. but it is because editing is all about setting pace. Yeah. That's the whole point of an editor. And so, and the, the way that it moves from really slow in the beginning to just, hyperkinetic speed throughout the middle and then it calms itself at the end just the way that whole thing was put together when they're jumping from dimension to dimension or multiverse to multiverse it was fantastic i just thought it was great um second would be top gun maverick for some of the technical stuff we talked about earlier mm -hmm. just how they had to put the, all those action scenes together i thought was great but everything for me yep uh all right nick I'm actually going to go with Top Gun Maverick for this one because I feel that because you're um, a Maverick, Nick. You know, <laughs> I really, I, I enjoyed it, and I really didn't even like the first Top Gun at all. So it's like a testament that I'm predicted, and I'm saying I like Maverick. But yeah, I don't know why. That's just my gut feeling um, on that one because I forgot which category it is, but there was one that used to be a really good, like determined, like that would often lead to best picture like almost every best picture winner won a category and it's not edited i'm gonna have to look look it up but this one it's all over the place because like dune and sound of uh metal and fortresses ferrari have won recently and those definitely didn't win best picture but i'll go with that one although tar is a very well edited movie too i i really enjoyed the editing for that john what do you think I'm very surprised that this one didn't have All Quiet in the category. Mm, yeah, I could see that. Yeah, the, worst, the scenes in there were really superbly edited. I'm kind of surprised with everything else that's nominated. It somehow got pushed out of that category. But anyway. But Tar, I can see there because, like you mentioned, Woody, it was about the same idea. The shots were longer at the beginning of, of the movie. And as her world unraveled, the shots became shorter and more frenetic, you know? So, yes. Okay, so next up, we have documentary short subject. I don't know any of those. Yeah, we have no. <laughs> all of us. None of us. <laughs> all right, so we all, we all have to pick a different one then. Okay. <laughs> Even though we've not seen it and give our opinion on why we think it'll work. And I okay. haven't heard any hype Same. about anything. So it's a complete prep shoot. Yeah. I'll go with the... Uh, Stranger at the gate. There you go. That's my pick. <laughs> okay. Because you like strangers and gates. Got it. Sure. <laughs> I'll go with how do you measure a year? Because okay, why the hell not? Because how? <laughs> yeah. Isn't it? No, don't they define that in rent? <laughs> <laughs> it's how many seconds? Right? That's how you measure seasons. And that sure. sounds like a performance evaluation. <laughs> how <do you> measure <laughs> a year. <laughs> One day at a time. What? Uh, what about you, Woody? 
Uh, I will take the elephant whisperers. All right. Don't uh, because of elephants. Uh, okay, sure. John, what do you think? My year of dicks. <laughs> oh, wait. That's, not even nominated. Darn. Um, so write and vote. It's been. Wait yeah. a second, John. Isn't that also the elephant whispers? No. <laughs> no it, it, it's, uh, it actually could be haul out or pull out. What is it? Yeah. Well, wait, how do you measure a, wait, how do you measure a year? My life in dicks. <laughs> also, the stranger at the gate. <laughs> that's, what call, that's what i call it anyway <laughs> yeah we could like uh, have a good mashup of titles yeah. like you know uh, a year of elephant dicks at the gate <laughs> 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 or something like that oh jesus yeah. all right okay so uh that's what we are here for for expert analysis <laughs> there you go <laughs> All right, so next up, we have documentary feature. I know about two of them. Okay, so we have All That Breathed, All the Beauty and the Bloodshed, Fire of Love, A House Made of Splinters, and Navalny. Actually, I know about all of them, but I haven't seen any of them. So, uh, John, what do you think? I've only seen one. Uh, it was Fire of Love. It was okay. So without seeing the rest, I'd be maybe okay if it won. It's not. It's certainly not one of the best documentaries I've ever seen. It's on Disney for free, um, but it, it was interesting. But from a documentary, document, blah, document. Why can I say this word? <laughs> documentary feature. I'm not sure if it's um, if it's Oscar worthy. It was okay. It was about a, a couple that was like volcanologists or something. Yes, like a married couple, and they were world experts for years. And they tell you up front that they died, but spoiler, spoiler alert. They, they tell you right up front, so it's not like you're only a minute into this movie before you know that. Just as you walk in into the, the theater to get to your seat, by the way, they die. Yeah. <laughs> so you well, know, I mean, it's like the Grizzly Man documentary, right? You yeah. know he dies, but you're you're watching the build up to how their lives sort of led to that. All right. Okay, uh, Woody, what do you think? I believe Navalny is going to take this one, uh, the story, because it's about the, the guy who got poisoned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I just, I I more read an article than I did the the documentary, but I just think that story is so compelling. And the fact that he kind of got out of the other side of it was just kind of whack. So I'm putting my money behind that one. All right. Uh, Nick, what about you? I love that you said whack. What, what do you think? That was not what I was thinking that you were going to say. I've heard of all these. I haven't seen any of them. And I feel like kind of bad that I haven't. I don't know. I feel like Fire and Love is the one that's probably going to win. And it's probably the one that's not on HBO Max, I think, because I think three of them are. I'll, I'll just say Fire and Love because they died and God damn it, they deserve an Oscar. I thought they were going to say they deserve to die. No, <laughs> no one deserves to die. I was like, Jesus, wow, I mean, that's, that's taking a turn. For oh, no. I mean, because, like, I, I personally, I would love to see all the beauty and the bloodshed because that looked like a really well made documentary. And uh, the director did Citizen Four and some really wonderful documentaries. Um, Laura, um, oh, I can't think of her name. I've met her, actually. Boitress? Yes, I met her at a film festival that I was a uh, uh, employee at. So she was very nice. Nice flex. <laughs> <laughs> I, it was when I don't remember. I, oh, it was the oath. That's what it was. Okay. So it was like 2010. So yeah, that makes sense. I was an undergrad. All right. Nice. Um, so yeah, I, yeah, again, abject failure from me. I could have seen all of them and I didn't see any of them. So that's exactly my. Thing. It's like Catholic guilt. It's like, I could have, but I don't know. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. So up next, we have directing Martin McDonough for Banshees, the Daniels for Everything Everywhere, uh, Spielberg for The Fablemans, Todd Field for Tar, and Ruben Ostlund for Triangle of Sadness. Woody, what do you think? The Daniels for Everything Everywhere All at Once. I think you have seen a theme for me throughout this thing. That was just an amazing film. I think they're going to take it for directing. All right. Plus, I want to see two guys fight over the mic on who presents first. <laughs> or who <accepts> first. <laughs> okay. Uh, Nick, what about you? Well, they won the Director's Guild of America Award. So that's a good precursor for the Daniels. I think they have the momentum. 
I don't know. I can't really. I thought Spielberg was going to win early on, and I don't think he is now. And I don't think the others stand out except for maybe Todd Field with Tar. But I'll, I'll go with the Daniels. Although I do have a question now. When they get to the Oscars, does it actually say their names or does it say Daniels? It'll say Daniels because that's what their uh, director guild, because they have kind of like the Cohen brothers. Mm. Okay. Uh, John, what about you? Uh, probably Daniels as well. Um, I want it to, even if it doesn't. And even if I don't think it's the best movie there, which I am kind of think it is, but I'm not, I could be convinced otherwise. Uh, it's just one of the most different movies that typically goes for Oscars. And some of these are very Oscar typical type movies, right? Like Ban- Banshees. I like Banshees. And if it won, I'm okay with it, but it's, it's a very Oscar type movie. Same with the Fableman, same with terror, you know, so not saying that they're bad movies, but these are very the movies that people only watch. It gets a bigger audience because of the Oscars. People aren't running up to see these movies. Every, everything everywhere all at once was just so is just so different that I, I hope it wins. I think it will win. Other than that, I think um, maybe McDonough or Field will win. But uh, I hope you're all right with Daniels. I think my guess would be Daniels, but personally, I would like Todd Field to win because it would be a nice return to directing, you know? Mm. Okay, so next category, we have uh, costume design. We have Babylon, Black Panther, Elvis, Everything Everywhere, and Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. I don't remember seeing that title ever before. (laughs) Anyway, uh, okay, so John, uh, what do you think? Uh, I have seen Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. Okay. Um, and, and I could sort of see the sense of why they would nominate it for costume design because a large part of it focuses on the styles of uh, Christian Dior because the whole movie is about a housekeeper with not a whole lot of money who comes into some money and her big goal is to buy a dress at, in Paris at Dior. Huh. Um so a lot of those dresses are there and they're all very pretty to look at, but I mean, is it a costume design or are they just showing some old fashions of Christian Dior? And I feel the same thing about the Elvis movie. If you're just replicating what Elvis wore, is it, should you really get an Oscar for costume design? Right. Um, everything everywhere all at once, as much as I love that movie, I don't think back and think, wow, the costumes are great in it. Black Panther won this before but I don't think they upped their game from the last movie, so I don't know. Yeah, they used stuff from the previous movie. Yeah. Would it be probably? best adapted costume design? <laughs> yes. Right. Best recycled right? costumes. So by process of elimination, the one I haven't seen, I will give it to Babylon. Yeah, I agree. And uh, shout out to uh, Mary's wife, who yes, was in exactly. charge in the, yeah. of, the, of those uh, costumes. Mm-hmm. Woody, what do you think? I, too, would like Babylon to win. I just don't think it will. I thought overall what they did in the with the pieces and the uh the intricacies of everything from like the the hobos that they have in the ba- big battle scene to the party that uh is at the very beginning of the movie to the weird Toby Maguire descent into hell stuff that was going on with that that I thought was just great. This is the one I think that Black Panther Black Panther though is going to win it. I don't like it, but I think it's going to win it. Okay. Uh, Nick, what about you? I just want Murray's wife to win an Oscar because she deserves one. I wonder if this <laughs> is the only place she's called Murray's wife. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's kind of funny. Um, but I hope, I hope she wins, Mary. Joe Biden's husband. <laughs> oh, yeah. I hope she wins. But I feel like in this category, I don't know. I feel like it's got to be either Elvis or Black Panther. That those are the two that I think will win. I'll go with Elvis. Um, okay, so next up, we have cinematography. Uh, we have All Quiet on the Western Front, Bardo, uh, False Chronicle of a Handful of Dot, Dot, Dot. <laughs> handful of Truths. Handful oh, okay. of Truths. Yes, yeah, yeah. Handful okay. of Dicks. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? I thought of that in my head when he was reading it. <laughs> I don't hold back. Okay, so yeah, uh, we have that, <laughs> uh, All Quiet, we have Elvis, we have Empire of Light, and Tar. 
<sighs> Cinematography. Okay. So, John, what do you think? Again, All Quiet on the Western Front, I think, has this one. I did not see Bardo. Uh, Tar, I think if there's going to be any possibility for an upset, could be that one. Um, Empire of Light was pretty, but I don't know if it's enough to take on the other two. Elvis, I think Baz Luhrmann has done better for cinematography. I liked Elvis, but I don't think it's really got a shot in this category. All right. Uh, Nick, what do you think? I don't know. This like cinematography is a tough one for me, but I'll say all quite the Western Front as well. Okay. Uh, Woody, what do you think? I think we're going to sweep the category with this one because it's all quiet on the Western Front. Uh, my number two is going to be Elvis, though, because, again, it's it's visually stunning. I thought the story was crap, but the it looked great. All right. That would be my number two as well. Yeah, I haven't seen Elvis or Empire of Light, but I guess All Quiet is a you know decent uh, guess, I suppose. But quick aside, all of you guys, you're all on Letterboxd, right? What do yes. you use? I'm not. Uh, Letterboxd? I'm not. Okay. I'm seeing Tar on the list. Uh, the poster for Tar, I think, is absolutely incredible. On Letterboxd, it's like... It's all black around Kate Blanchett, and we see her from below, but we don't see her face, and her, mm -hmm. her arms are, like, outstretched. And she goes corner to corner, right? With her, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, like, it's, a, you know, it's a, of course, it's a static picture, but there is so much movement and energy on that photo. I think it's an incredible poster. Mm -hmm. And rarely am I, you know, like... You know, struck by a movie poster, but this this is one. Yeah. So I just love it says Blanchett. It doesn't even say Kate. It's just just Blanchett, and you know exactly who it is. The poster I've seen doesn't even doesn't even have her name. It's it, it just Star. That might just be the letterbox because I'm on IMDb and it's got a film by Todd Field, Blanchett, Tar, only in theaters. Okay, so yeah. I'm looking at the one on Letterbox, just so uh, you, you don't think I'm crazy. No, no, you're crazy. We think you're crazy. <laughs> oh, you're insane. For much different reasons. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, that's that's all right. But uh, okay, so yeah, if you want to, you know, really see what I'm talking about, check the one on Letterbox. It's it's brilliant. Okay, moving on. Sorry for the aside. Next, uh, we have animated feature film. We have Pinocchio from Del Toro. We have Marcel the Shell with shoes on. We have Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. We have The Sea Beast, and we have Turning Red. Woody, what do you think? This should be a massive win for Pinocchio. So it is a stunning stop-motion feature. Um, I have seen um, all of the other ones except Marcel the Shell. Uh, but Pinocchio was... The, if they're going to give it for everything that goes on from a design to the animation style, to the story, to even the voice acting, um, it was one of the better, most disturbing films I've seen last year. So it is not the happy Disney. I've got so, so strings to do, do, do. It's not that at all. <laughs> it is the total opposite of it. Um, I just thought it was fantastic. And I think it's going to run away with it. All right. Uh, John, what do you think? I'm with Woody that uh, Pinocchio was great and dark, uh, visually stunning, and I think it would win. My favorite in that category is Marcel the Shell with shoes on. Uh, it is friggin' sweet. It's funny, but there's no way it should win for animation. If you've seen it, they even had a, apparently to make a convincing case for it to be considered because so much of it is live action, and the only animated thing is this little shell which has a blinking eye and a little mouth. Like, it's barely animated. It really is. Now, it's a, it's a sweet movie. It um, pulls on your heartstrings, but, um, yeah, it's just a, a freaking awesome movie, but no way should it win for animated feature film. That should be Pinocchio. I've seen Sea Beast. That's just a regular throwaway movie. There's nothing great about it. Turning Red, people seem to like Pixar, so maybe that has a chance. Um, Puss in Boots, I haven't seen. All right. Uh, Nick, what about you? I actually just saw Marcel the show with shoes on at my local movie theater because they had one show in on a Saturday and I had to misname that tune because I wanted to see it so badly for such a long time. I really loved it. I hope it was worth it. It was. It, it <laughs> okay. was packed. 
it was packed. I was kind of shocked. Um, I did see Pinocchio. I think that will probably win. I did see the other three, uh, but they, th- this is a weird year because I think all three of them are, besides maybe Marcel, the shell, are pretty accessible movies for the most part. Like mm-hmm. Turning Red is Disney Plus and Sea Beast is on Netflix and Puss in Boots, the sequel, is was a hidden theater. So I feel like it's kind of a weird year because usually there's like one or two outliers like that aren't ex- as accessible, but these are all pretty well-known movies in this category. So, but yeah, I think Pinocchio's got it because it's the most unique and um, Del Toro's an Oscar favorite. So, yeah, makes sense. Um, okay, so I, I have no opinion on this one. I haven't seen any, so sorry. <laughs> okay, so next up, we have actress in a supporting role. We have Angela Bassett for Black Panther, uh, Hong Chao for The Whale, Kerry Condon for Banshees, Jamie Lee Curtis for Everything Everywhere, and S- uh, Stephanie Su for Everything Everywhere as well. So, uh, Nick, what do you think? This is... I think the toughest of the acting categories because they've all won at different award shows. Like Jamie Lee Curtis won at SAG. Uh, Angela Bassett won the Golden Globes. Uh, Carrie Condon won at BAFA. So I feel like this category, it's almost like rolling the dice to see who is going to win. My instinct is, I think this is like what he said, like a year of redemption and make it up Oscars. So I think Angela Bassett is going to win. But I feel like I could see Carrie Condon or uh, J.B. Lee Curtis sneak in, but I would put money on Angela because she should have won an Oscar. She played Tina Turner, for Christ's sake. She was amazing in it. Um, and she's just a really terrific actress, um, but I think I think it's hers. All right. Uh, Woody, what do you think? Yeah, so I just go one of these supporting roles categories is always the redemption arc. The thing is, I would uh, – Stephanie Sue in every every – thing everywhere all at once is great she's very underrated and for those of you who don't know who she is she is um on oh why am i blanking on the name of the show now the amazon show marvelous mrs mazel okay she plays the the chinese wife of her ex-husband if any of you guys know but she plays the daughter Mm -hmm. in everything everywhere all at once she's great especially at the end Mm -hmm. um but to me it was a coin flip between angela bassett and jamie lee curtis uh, I think I'm with you, Nick, though. I think it's going to go to Angela Bassett for that. But, boy, I would love to see Jamie Lee Curtis get up there and give a speech. That would be hilarious. Mm. <laughs> yes. Uh, John, what about you? I want it to be Stephanie Sue, as Woody said. I think her performance in that movie was top-notch. Uh, if Angela Bassett's maybe a great actress, but she barely did anything in Black Panther. So if she gets it, it's purely respect of the actress and not what she did in that movie. So I really don't think she should. Um, Carrie Condon. I don't even remember who that was in the movie. Um, That was Colin Farrell's. Well, I mean, there's only one woman in the whole movie, really. So it's got to be her. But I mean, she's certainly not doing much. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. I'm not normally a big fan of her. And I know you're not supposed to say that, but... um, So I don't, and I didn't see the whales. So I, I don't know. I want it to be Stephanie Sue, but I don't have a guess of who it's going to be. Maybe, maybe you're right about Angela Bassett, but I don't think she deserves it for this role. Mm-hmm. Nick, I will say the upset in this category is that none of the actresses from Women Talking were nominated in this category. They should have of- been. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of people thought that like one of them or multiple actresses from that movie were going to get nominations. So it was kind of shocking that none of them were nominated. Um, but I feel like this is like the trickiest category because I feel like it can go a few different ways. But yeah, Angela Bass does not do anything. She's everything. I was actually, a quick side note, when Tina Turner was inducted into the Rock Hall two years ago, I went with Josh and Angela Bassett inducted her because she played Tina Turner and she gave the most like, I don't know if you guys saw it, it was like the most over dramatic induction speech ever for someone it was just like <laughs> so radios over the top it was almost like you're watching a play and i felt like i was like wow like this is like i feel like i'm, a, I'm on broadway or something <laughs> so serious love angel though all right uh okay so 
yeah, this is you know, this might be you know blasphemy, but I don't really have an opinion for this one, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Okay, so uh, next up we have actress in a leading role. We have Kate Blanchett for Tar, Anna de Armas for Blonde, Andrea Riseborough for To Leslie, Michelle Williams for The Fablemans, and Michelle Yeoh for Everything Everywhere All at Once. Uh, John, what do you think? I think it's going to be between Michelle Yeoh and Kate Blanchett. Mm-hmm. Um, Michelle Williams is who I have liked in the past. She was absolutely terrible. <laughs> Fablemans um, did not see to Leslie, so I have no opinion on her. Anna de Armas, um, I thought she was fine. Actually, I know uh, she got criticized a lot for it. she was fine, but I don't think she's a real contender in this category. I'm going to go with Michelle Yeoh just because Kate Blanchett's won before, right? So I think people like to spread it around a little bit. Oh yeah, she won it for Blue Jasmine, I think. Well, I'm going to tell you something, and this might lead into mine for, because Kate Blanchett won an Oscar for the Aviator, Jazz and Oh yeah, that's right. It. That's it. And then she won 9 years later in 2014 for Blue Jasmine. Okay. Right? What are we at? 20, nine years out. 23. Right. So every 9 years Kate Blanchett wins an Oscar. So I actually think it's between her and Michelle Yeoh for everything ever all at once. Yeah. I think it's like role like and they've kind of split the like awards, so it's like who the hell knows? Um I feels like Kate Blanchett is gonna win, but I feel like it could be Michelle Yeoh. Only thing I'm gonna say about Kate Blanchett and people are um kind of like dismissing her a little because of the everything ever all all at once fandom or super fandom. She learned classical music, how to conduct an orchestra, German. Like, this is like the performance of a lifetime. And Kate Blanchett is an incredible actress. And I feel like, especially Blue Jasmine, like, it's such a forgettable movie. Like, no one talks about it. Mm. Uh, but I feel like Tar is a movie people are talking about and that would be remembered more. But yeah, every nine years for Kate Blanchett. And I will say, I saw Blonde, absolutely horseshit movie. I mm -hmm. was just so bored. She's good in it, I guess, but it's like, it has to be up there with like the worst movies that have been nominated for an Oscar. Like, it's just, it's such a pile of shit. And to Leslie, I'm more fascinated by the campaign for Andrew Riseborough to get a nomination out of almost nowhere. And I feel like, you know, was it shady? Yeah. But I mean, Harvey Weinstein did far worse um, with their <laughs> to get it. And people owed Oscars what did he do? Him. <laughs> <laughs> Harvey who? Yeah. Um, a giant rabbit? <laughs> and Michelle Williams is really a supporting role, really, if you see the fable woman. She's really not the lead actress. I mean, it's almost like if you're going to see Hannibal Lecter for Sounds of Lambs, kind of. Like, mm. if you watch it, it's really a supporting role, but she's kind of the main character, I guess, so I could see that as the argument. But I didn't, like, particularly love the performance and it's just filler. Like, it's really filler. Like, no offense to these actresses. Like, and I feel like this every year, in actor too, especially. It's only like the fillers. So there's only two people really fighting for this Oscar. And watch it be Andrew Riseborough, because that Oscar campaign just, like, is incredible. No, it's going to be, uh, I think, Kate Blanchett. I, uh, I agree. I agree. So, um, John, was it uh, your turn, or you mentioned it already? I've already went, but I will say, as much as I do like everything everywhere all at once i and michelle Yeoh was fun was great in it i i would still if i had to pick would be kate blanchett i think she was amazing in terror for sure can this be like the year of the tie like with barbara streisand won and katherine hepburn like this is the one year i would love a tie to happen mm. quite honestly yeah yeah good uh, good point uh, and uh, yeah uh Sorry, Woody, I, I wasn't sure if I had called your name before. So, yes, uh, if you want to add anything, go ahead. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, these guys have said everything about it that I had. Uh, I think Michelle Yeoh will win, but if you've seen Tar within the first five minutes, you'll know that she that uh, Kate Blanchett should win that thing. And just the way that character evolves and how creepy it becomes later in the movie mm -hmm. was great. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we move on to actor in a supporting role. We have Brendan Gleeson for Banshees, Brian Tyree Henry for Causeway, Judd Hirsch for The Fablemans, Barry Keegan for the Banshees, and Kiwai Kwan for Everything Everywhere All at Once. John, what do you think? I think Brendan Gleeson's got it uh, for this one. From the same movie, I think Barry Keegan did a fantastic job too. I went to The Fablemans... Uh, 
with a guy who loved Judd Hirsch's performance in that so much. I know he he, he would pick that. I thought it was fine. Did you go with me to that movie? <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you re- it was a good performance, but I don't know. He's in the, in it for, what, two two minutes of the movie? I no, don't he's it. He, I think it's like five and a half minutes or something. Right. Like that. I think it's like, like eight minutes. Even as, a, something yeah, even as a supporting role, I feel that's short. So I don't know. A great performance, but it was over too, so fast. Uh, I would think Brendan Gleeson's got it. And I and I never heard of the movie Cosme. Oh, that was on Apple TV, and there was a snow day here, and I have to watch it. It was really good. It had uh, Jennifer Lawrence in it, too. Okay. It's about her having PTSD as she goes back to New Orleans. It's like a slow burn kind of movie, but I thought it was really good. But yeah, they didn't promote it at all, no. Apple TV. All right. Uh, Woody, what do you think? Well, like I said, I'm probably the guy that went with John to see The Fable Man. But, <laughs> uh, so but Judd Hirsch was in the movie just under 10 minutes. So here's, there's really kind of three scenes, one where he comes into the house, one where they're having dinner, and then the big scene where he's in the bedroom. If I said this on the other podcast, but if Dame Judi Dench can win for uh, Shakespeare in Love for eight minutes, he could win it for that. However, he will not. Ki Hu Kwan is then the darling of everything. Everybody wants that comeback story. He's going to win this thing for everything, everywhere, all at once. The performance came out of nowhere. So again, I knew he was in it. And when I went into it, it was one of those, because my wife didn't know. And she's like, who is that? I go, short round. She goes, oh my God. (laughs) That's the only thing you're allowed to say in a movie with me is, what were they in? Uh, (laughs) But just the way that he flipped his character, that character was super interesting. Just the way that he goes from the, the nerdy husband to the super confident guy. It was a very unexpected performance. And I think he should get, get all the love he can get. All right. Uh, Nick, what about you? Kiyu Kwan is definitely one in this category. He's won like almost every major award, it seems. And I feel like it's a good story, too, because he took a break for almost two decades from acting. And he's going to be one of two actors that were in Encino Man to win an Oscar this year, which is something I thought I would never say. (laughs) Um, But Personally, if I was an Oscar voter, though, I would actually say um, Brandon Gleeson for Banshees. I thought it was incredible. I think in this category, like the next one we're going to talk about, I think it's all first time nominees. So I really like that, too, when it's like a first time nominee and they could add this to their resumes that they were nominated for an Academy Award. Um, but yeah, it's it's Q uh, Kwan's all the way. All right. OK, so next up, the next. You didn't answer it. Yeah. Who are you picking? I think the vote might be split between Gleason and Keegan. So maybe a third person will win it. Right. I, w- I wouldn't mind Gle- Brandon Gleason winning. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yes. I was just going to say, if you put in the, if you compare the work that Brandon Gleason put into Judd Hirsch, Brandon Gleason is almost a leading role character in this movie. Mm-hmm. He's yes. in so okay. many scenes and stuff. And Judd, uh, great as Judd Hirsch was. Compare the amount of work, it just frustrates me that he would be considered for it. As great as it was, as great as it was. I'm not denying he was great. Why do you hate Judge Hirsch, John? <laughs> <laughs> what did he do to you? <laughs> I hated Taxi, okay? He missed the taxi. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, okay, so the next to last category is actor in a leading role. So we have Austin Butler for Elvis, uh, Colin Farrell for Banshees. And not Brendan Gleeson. That's what I thought would surprise maybe a few people. Like, you know, maybe both names could be switched. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Brendan Fraser for The Whale, Paul Mescal for After Sun, and Bill Nye for Living. Nick, what do you think? I've actually seen all these movies except for After Sun because my movie club is actually going to uh, watch that next weekend. So I'm going to watch it. So that's the only one I haven't seen. Um, this is a tricky one too because I feel like. Austin Butler, Brandon Frazier are the two series contenders. And then Colin Farrell's kind of in the mix, but he's not like a front runner, but he could maybe sneak in. The other two, it's just like, yay, we like to have some art house movies or independent movies in the mix just to make us seem like we're well rounded. Even though, like, you know, Livin was really good and After Sun looks incredible. If I had to pick who's winning now, this is tough because I feel like Brandon Frazier is probably going to win. 
but it wouldn't shock me if Austin Butler did. I mean, the dude did such a great job as Elvis. Like, he still can't even talk, like, himself anymore because he's trying to, like, shake that um, vocal training that he did for the Elvis role. And Lisa Marie Presley passed away recently, so... I could see that also help in his case a little. I hope that doesn't happen because that would be a bunch of horse shit. You know? But yeah. he deserves it though. If you see Elvis, like he absolutely no, no, deserves yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, but like you but know for it, that like, reason, yeah. Doesn't matter that like uh, you know, yeah. Lisa Mary Presley died recently, so let's give give it to Austin Butler. That I hope that's not their reasoning. <laughs> I would think most people voted before she died. Well, no, I think they vote really like this week, really. Oh, really? Like, oh, okay. Yeah, so they don't they don't vote really until much later. Okay, like into okay. the the season because of all the campaigning and stuff. Um, mm. But um, no, I think it's probably Brandon Fraser. He did such a marvelous job in the whale, and I, I would love to see him win. And I would love to see this be the year Encino Man is like you know having this great renaissance because <laughs> him and Quan went in. Um, but yeah, I think that, and then I think Colin Farrell could be in the mix if it splits the vote. That's the only scenario I could see with Frazier and Butler being like neck and neck, but it's almost like the best actors category. It's kind of, there's two obvious people and then everyone else is pretty much just not in contention. All right. Uh, Woody, what do you think? Uh, well, I looked up and voting closes Sunday, March 12th at 7 p.m. Eastern. So they haven't even voted yet. Wow. That's so, what I mean. They they don't do it till much later. Let's get him to listen to this podcast. <laughs> I didn't know it was uh, such a last minute thing. Yeah, me neither. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Sorry, uh, would you uh, go ahead? No worries. So what I'm kind of going down the same road as Nick. There's it's Austin Butler or Brendan Fraser, not Fraser. Fraser. <laughs> Um, but I'm gonna go Brendan Fraser on this one. I just think he's got such the buzz going out of all of these that he's he's gonna get a lockdown. Um, I liked Austin Butler. I just don't think it was best actor. I thought it was, it was damn good performance guy, but it's not, it's not best actor. I would love Bill Nye to win because I, I just, you know, think he is great, but I don't expect him to win. I think Brandon Fraser will, Fraser, sorry, (laughs) (laughs) will probably, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised at all if, if he won. So, yes. All right, so... Oh, my turn. Oh, sorry, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, because I'm trying to mix it up, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Start with a different person, and <laughs> sorry. And you could have skipped me, except I wanted to go off on Austin Butler a little bit, because I really don't think... I think he's got buzz because he's young and pretty, and he did a fine performance, but I don't think he's got real contention here in this category i'll be perfectly honest i think brendan fraser does i think he's probably the front runner i think colin farrell's got better chance than austin butler to be honest uh bill nye i uh, have not seen living but based on your comment before nick about some people will vote for a legacy i think he might get some votes there paul Mescal, i did see after sun uh really good movie his performance was amazing, but I think it's not, he's not a contender for this category at all. I think it's going to be Brendan Fraser or maybe Colin Farrell will pull off the upset. All right. Woody. Uh, so I need to make an edit from my earlier comment. I was okay. at the New York times for their fan votes. So I went to the Oscars website cause it didn't feel right per your comment. <laughs> um, it says final votes end on March 7th. So they still got a week. At five o'clock Pacific time. So yeah, when I said that, I was like thinking like it's this week is like it's sometime like later on that it's gonna be done. Okay. Yep. So it started. It starts actually today, the second, mm-hmm. and then it ends. So it's only one week of voting. It's interesting. Okay. All right. So we have the last category now: best picture. We have ten nominees, of course. But before I forget. John, you had a good question on Twitter earlier today. Do you want to yes. talk about it? <laughs> so bizarre coincidence that uh, I was watching Marcel, so I'm giving away the answer. So my question on trivia was what two movies featured the same poem? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was watching, so I'll give away the answer now if that's okay. But Marcel the Shell with Shoes On, uh, towards the end, he's reading a poem that I think his grandmother left him and i was thinking why does this poem seem so 
familiar. Like I'm, and it's not like a poem like um, I don't know, stopping by the woods on a snowy evening. It's not something that well known, but it seemed familiar to me. And then I remembered it was also featured in Empire of Light, the exact same poem. And the poem, the poem is uh, Philip Larkin's The Trees. And it just seems like of all the movies that are nominated for an Oscar, what are the odds of them nominating this? I won't say obscure poem, but it's certainly a, an odd choice to feature in two movies that are up for Oscars. Huh. And there's your answer. There's your trivia. Okay. And, uh, okay, so I'm, I know nothing about poetry and even less uh, on English poetry, but what kind of poem is it? Uh, like, is it like a sad, depressing or, you know, cheerful? Or not like or? a limerick? It's not, no, it's not a limerick. <laughs> and it, it, I wouldn't say it's cheerful as much as it has a feel of sadness, but it's more poignant, I would say. Okay. And more about seasons changing and stuff, but it, it's positive, but sort of more in a poignant way that might come across as depressing. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. All right. I'll uh, keep my eyes and ears open when I, uh, when I watch uh, either of those. Yeah. Because I haven't watched. There's either. a lot of poetry in Empire of Light. Okay. Unlike Marcel the Shell, there's only the one poem, but there's a lot of poetry in Empire of Light for poetry fans. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. All right, that's odd because I thought that movie was about like a movie, a, a movie theater in like a, a England or something. It is, yeah. Okay, and still a, lots of poems. Okay, yeah, fantastic <laughs> performance by Olivia. Movies are poetry, dude. Movies are poetry. <laughs> good point. <laughs> good point. And uh, yeah, sorry, John. Uh, good performance by. Uh, uh, is that Olivia Coleman? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that her name? Yeah. She's amazing in it. Okay, so we got Best Picture. We have All Quiet on the Western Front. We have Avatar. We have Banshees. We have Elvis. Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Fablemans, Tar, Top Gun Maverick, Triangle of Sadness, and Women Talking. And uh, I, before we begin, I wanted to... Um, uh, John, can you give us a little short review? You didn't like Women Talking, but uh, can you tell us why in a few sentences? It was so heavy. Every line was so heavy handed. Uh, and I'm not saying I disagree with any of the politics in the movie. The politics are about is basically about the suppression of women. Mm -hmm. Fine. I totally agree. And I get that. But every single line was hitting this point home where none of the dialogue felt real. It just felt like we're going to make this message movie the entire way through. And I hate when people complain about things being woke. Like like Marvel haters will say, this is too woke and that's too woke. Like, shut the fuck up. Maybe we need some woke moments. But there's a trans character in this movie, uh, Women Talking, which seems so forced into the movie, had nothing to do. They didn't use her or him, sorry, at all. Um, it was just purely to, this is how movie should be today it, it was so heavy-handed with the messaging token trans character pretty much yeah yeah and, okay. and it was so heavy-handed that it, it nauseated me it was so bad okay wow <laughs> so that's your winner for best picture i was i was almost <laughs> angry that, that that this was nominated well, you know, movies are supposed to bring out, you know, emotions. So maybe that's the winner <laughs> in, that, in that regard. Oh, I know. Like, John's got fired up. I never hear him say fuck ever. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Um, <laughs> All right. So, uh, Nick, what do you think for that one? Oh, okay. So for this category, okay. Everything, everyone at once. I feel like it could win. But... I feel that this is a tough category too for me because I could see the Fable Bins just because it's a movie about Hollywood and they love movies about themselves often. Um, <laughs> All Quiet has some momentum lately. They, they, but, they love a good circle jerk. <laughs> but oh, well, that's all these award shows are circle. Jerks. Yes. Like they yeah, applaud sure. themselves, like they pretty much ejaculate, you know. <laughs> Every time they uh, applaud. Boy, we're getting you know. explicit on this one, Pat. What the hell? <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're earning your uh, explicit uh, rating. Fuck yeah. No, I just like, <laughs> that's why I, I have a hard time watching award shows because I just like, it's too self-congratulatory for me um, sometimes. But uh, 
everything I ever want once is lead in, but I will say I can see Banshees of Isherin sneak it in for some weird reason. I don't know why. That and All Quiet I could see. Um, but I mean, like some of these have no shot in hell of winning. Like Women Talking has no shot. Triangle Sadness is like our international, like, oh, like we're we're like cinema with a capital C. Uh Top Gun, it could. I mean, it's a movie that has gotten some buzz because it's a movie that saved the box office. Tar has a, a decent shot, but I don't think it is. Avatar, no. I, it's not really been well regarded. And Elvis, it's not a best picture winner type material. Like, if it's going to win, it's going to win for, like, the actor or for, like, some of the technical awards. I'm going to say Banshee's Insurance going to do the upset, but I think it could be everything everywhere. I mean, to be quite honest, did anyone think last year that Coda was going to win Best Picture? No. Nope. So that that's kind of how I feel. And that's why, on a rant for a second, that's why these 10 nominees for Best Picture actually helps a movie like Coda, where really they have much momentum going in. But like, if there were five nominees, I don't think Coda would have even been nominated. But because it was 10, it helped expand it. And that if there's like, uh, what do we want to say? Like, close race between two or three movies, then it could kind of sneak in because of momentum. Are you saying nobody heard it coming? <laughs> yeah. No, well, you couldn't hear it. Um, he had to sign it. Uh, but uh, no, I, I feel like, I guess I'm going to go with Banshee's Ishran, but I guess everything, everywhere, Fablemans and All Quiet and Tar, I guess, are the serious contenders. The rest, I don't think are. Why don't you name them all? Way to not commit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I, no, I did. I or, did. I did. Banshees, or? Banshees of I, I mean, it's tough because when you have 10 nominees, like, even in this, there's only, like, really five really serious contenders, really. For sure. And the rest are just like, oh, we gotta have a blockbuster. Oh, we gotta have a yeah. foreign movie. We gotta have a rd movie or indie movie so yeah i don't remember if we started recording by that point but i mentioned that this year we could have had five nominees mm -hmm. without missing out you know Agreed. yeah they easily could have like yes. it would have been fine with me yep okay so john what do you think i do think it's still going to be everything everywhere all at once uh my second choice doesn't have a chance in hell um uh, my my second favorite i mean is triangle of sadness actually but I know it doesn't. It's one of those you could easily skip out of the category because it's not going to win. Um, but uh, I can definitely everything everywhere all at once. Tear for the upset. Okay, Woody. What about you? I'm going with R R R. Right in vote for R R R. Yes. <laughs> now that I know I can like get it started because I've got time. <laughs> it is going to be everything everywhere all at once. Uh, Actually, I would consider this almost the coda of this year, meaning it came out of nowhere. So it came out in the spring, I believe, or or early summer. It was barely in any theaters. It was a word of mouth movie that just ended up rocketing uh, into the zeitgeist of people talking about it. Uh, the acting was fantastic. The story was different and it looked fantastic. And you had hot dog fingers, which none of these other <laughs> movies have hot dog fingers in them. <laughs> but I just think, um, I think it's going to, it's grabbed the momentum. It's got it. It's not going to let go. And if people are voting for it this week, I have a feeling that's going to close it out. It's just such a weird movie to me for, to predict for best picture. Cause it just does not seem like the kind of movie because it's a sci-fi movie and, or, or fantasy movie. And it's just, it's so strange to me to see it because going the Oscars, they're usually very square with what they usually choose. Like going from Nomadland to Coda to everything, everywhere all at once would be such a like radical jump with these usually pretty banal, dull voters. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. I would, I would like to see it happen just because it's just so radical, but it's just, there's something that is making me, um, I, I can't see that, but I would like to see it happen. John? I just wanted to say, too, I absolutely love everything, everywhere, all at once. So this is not a slam saying it doesn't deserve to win. 
because it's not I'm, the Judd Hirsch of the best. No, no, but <laughs> it's not women talking. <laughs> um, Oscars have also been under fire for being too white. Mm. This is the only non-white movie, right? Mm. In the best well, picture, Avatar is Avatar blue. blue. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> um so i think a lot of people will vote with that in mind as well yeah if you were torn between two movies that you liked equally say that one and terror the safer political one to vote for is everything everywhere all at once i I want women talking when just for john's reaction (laughs) (laughs) i don't have a gunshot sound (laughs) sorry I mean, I love Tar, and I would really like it to win, but I won't be mad if everything everywhere all at once uh, wins. Um, yeah, my my favorite would be Tar, and Banshee is in second place. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's it. And I mean, All Quiet, I mean, it, it's like none of us expect it to win, right? I feel like that's more akin to quote, to Coda, to be quite honest, than everything ever at once, because Coda was on a streaming platform like Apple, and it kind of had like a slow kind of ascension, sort of like All Quiet, even because I feel like it's just been on Netflix. It's kind of slowly yeah, but seen more. Co- Coda didn't have any momentum, I think, because All Quiet won, uh, you know, the BAFTAs. Yeah. Oh, I'm just saying, like in terms of people seeing the movie. Okay. Okay. Like not like yeah. the actual like for the awards. We did this Oscar show last year, right? As well? I think we did. You did. Yeah. So we might have the tape to prove it. So I may be wrong. But yes, because you record this to tape. All right, well, the recording. <laughs> <laughs> I'm boring, <laughs> Um But you said no one, none of us predicted this last year. I kind of think I did predict Coda last year. I could be wrong, but I kind of think I did. <laughs> the tape, Woody. Let's review it. Yeah, I like it. I know. Let's let's go back, edit it in. <laughs> <laughs> I think the best picture will be Coda. Uh, yeah. <laughs> An ETF flashback. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I don't remember. Uh, but uh, yeah, fair point. I, I yeah, I don't remember the Oscars last year. Actually, not 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 <laughs> much of it. If you're a Patreon supporter, you can go behind the paywall and get it. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think it was last year? I wonder. Oh, Power the Dog was the one that I think everyone thought. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. I think I think you're right. I think that was the one everyone was like, "Oh, yeah." Except me. Except apparently Budford, because he's such a wise <laughs> Canadian librarian. Right. <laughs> All right, so uh, that covers it. I think, uh, guys, do you have anything? Is there anything that you would love to see this year, like another person getting slapped in the face? Or <laughs> <laughs> Will Smith. I want Will Smith to get slapped this year. Confirmed. Confirmed. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, yeah. Uh, I just, Woody mentioned he's disappointed that RRR wasn't represented. Of all the movies last year, I think the menu should have been represented somehow, too. But. I agree. Yeah, yeah. Especially for screenplay, I was yeah. shocked that it didn't at least get a um, a screenplay nomination for for sure. And also, uh, Viola Davis uh, wasn't nominated for the Woman King, and the performance for uh, Danielle uh, Dan Waller for Till was amazing. That absolutely should have gotten an Oscar nomination. Um, and I'm also stunned that they didn't take the opportunity to nominate Taylor Swift for. Um, where the craw dad sing for um oh that that movie that my parents liked that I really did not like too much um oh where the craw dad sing yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> yes <laughs> it's like wait is that the same movie <laughs> pulled the phone <laughs> so yeah oh my god what is wrong <laughs> were people surprised too that Glass Onion didn't get more Oscars or no I'm surprised he got any to be honest with you yeah exactly I Thank like you. the film but I'm surprised it got one. Yeah, I guess. And the only other one that I saw was a really major stuff was Eddie Redmine. I think that's Redmayne? his name. Eddie Redmayne. Yeah, for The Good Nurse. That was one that has been like at every award show except for the Oscars, mm. it seems. Like nominations wise. Right. Are you guys gonna gonna watch it live? Or are you gonna yeah. watch it in the background and do something else? Or Yeah. 
<laughs> both. I usually <laughs> do both, something yeah. else. <laughs> like, well, yeah, and, up you. yeah, it's like three and a half hours or something. It's even longer than RRR. So <laughs> I'm not, not going to watch. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, is like, I don't mind it if like, I like there's some categories I have a little bit more vested interest in than others and then i'm like usually working on something and i'm like oh like best actor is up um but yeah i know some people get dressed up they go to parties they watch it like it's like the super bowl i'm just like eh, it's all circle jerk it is <laughs> all right we so a, we need a bell for every time that word has been said <laughs> <laughs> i just want jimmy kimmel to just go quickly Oh, you know, God. why is the only the host, the only host oh, I like? That's who's hosting it. Yeah, it's going back to Billy Crystal. Billy Crystal's the only one that I cared about when he was hosting. Everybody else has just been bad. So I really wish last year they did the only murders in the building that they had Steve Martin, uh, Martin Short, and Selena Gomez because that was a rumor that they were going to actually maybe host. It'd be a good team, and it would have been fun. But that's a TV show. That's not a motion picture. And it's also a Disney production and Hulu, so it could have got it. But I will say, I like when there is a host, because there was like three or four years they didn't have a host. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. And you do need a host. I agree. I think you definitely need a host for this to keep it all together. All right. Okay, so guys, this was excellent. I hope the listeners will enjoy listening as much as we did recording this. Where can we find you online? Let's start with John. On Twitter, Book Mindset, at Book Mindset, B-I-B-O-O-K-M-I. Book Mindset, yeah, anyway, that's what it is. I okay. never get through saying that. You ask me that every show, and every time I butcher it. I thought you were saying, like, Old McDonald, like, e i e i o. Yeah, yeah. I might as well. Nick. You should pre-record it and then hit play when I... Uh, <laughs> why don't you... Right. All right. So uh, thank you, John. Uh, Woody, what about you? Uh, you guys can find me on Instagram or Twitter at The Wooden Chef. All right. Awesome. You made it thank seem you. so easy. I know. <laughs> I know. Okay. All right. Nick, what about you? So you can follow me at my podcast, which is at Rock and Retro Pod, both on Twitter and Instagram, and you can follow my personal account at Nick D. Bamback. And if you want to see my letterbox reviews of movies, it's ND Bamback. If you want to follow uh, that, and we will be doing an Oscar episode, um, hopefully the same week that this episode premieres. So we shall see what we think of the music categories. What's what in? Because we're going to go like in depth, like we did last year, and kind of talk about the songs and scores that are nominated. All right. And also check out Patrick's episode that he was on recently for Moon Age Daydream. And I'm still getting messages, by the way, Patrick, about the douche caravan. I <laughs> still, I'm still getting them. It's one of the funniest things that I'm glad I left in the final edit. No, oh, yeah, that was, that was brilliant. It was brilliant. For sure. But thank you for coming on, though. Oh, my, my pleasure. It was nice. It was a good time. All right. So thank you guys and thank you listeners. I hope you enjoyed the Oscars and uh, we will catch you on the next one. Thanks. Mm -hmm.